Hello and welcome to C Programming Zero to Neural Networks. Today we are covering ScanF. ScanF is a function which takes user input from a terminal, uh, which is not something we do a massive amount of in modern C programming, but it's helpful for testing and it's helpful for a, a variety of things and it's important to know, so we're going to cover it. And uh, it's useful to build simple learning programs as well. So let's start with making a uh, C file, we're going to call it input.c and we're going to include the C standard input output library. We're going to have to put a hash there, aren't we? And we can remember how to type stdio.h. And we're going to need a main function. And we're going to, as always, return a zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the, uh, the program's going to prompt a user to enter a number. And we're just going to print out that number to introduce scanf. Nice and simple. So we're going to do printf, uh, enter a number. And we're going to print out the number. Now we're going to need a variable to hold the number in, aren't we? So we're going to have int input. And we're going to put, print out there. We're going to say you entered percent %d. I'm going to have input. So we need something in between these two statements. That's going to ask for user input. And the thing that we have to do that is scanf, C-A-N-F. It is a assist function to printf, kind of. So we do percent %d like we do with printf to say that this scanf is expecting to receive um, a whole number. And then what we do is we put the address of operator and then our input variable, our variable that we're going to use to store the input. And we're going to explain this address of operator in a little bit. It's very important in C programming and it's where C programming usually starts to trip people up and they start to get a bit confused about it all. So we're going to make sure we've all got a really good knowledge and understanding of the address of operator. So let's run this program. Enter a number, 77. You entered 77. Pretty useless program, but it does show that we can, uh, we can uh, take user input. So let's look at what's happening here. The program runs, prints out the statement, and it just stopped. And it doesn't do anything, and it'll stop there for pretty much forever. Uh, until the computer runs out of battery or you know whatever happens we have a power cut so um, this is a blocking function so the execution of the program is blocked at that point at the scanf point and it is until that scanf until, even entering a number doesn't unblock it we have to enter a number well it, even if we we have to enter a number and press enter but if we don't enter a number and just press enter nothing happens we stay blocked until that scanf receives a value then uh, the program execution does not continue. And this is what we call a blocking function. So that's basically it. With first scanf, it's not really much more complicated than that. We can obviously, if we change this to a float and then put uh, a dash f there, uh, sorry, a percent f there and a percent f there, we can run the same program, but take uh, a decimal point number, we've just put 8, it'll say you entered 8.000, we can put 0 0.4341, and it'll say you entered 0 0.431. So we can use it for all the data types. Let's go back to doing int. Not capital D, D, and D. So what we can do is make that a meme, can't we? We can put enter your age <laughs> and we put here we can put your age is <laughs> so this is the um, there's a meme of this isn't it enter your age 23 your age is 23 enter your age 89 your age is 89 this kind of programming is what's going to get you the top jobs in um, whatever company you want to work in <laughs> you show that to an employer they're going to go yeah you're hired <laughs> We could make this a bit more complicated for enter your birth date and we in brackets e.g 1999 and then what we have to do here is 2023 the current year minus whatever we inputted enter your birth data enter your birth date enter your birth year we'll put and then this should calculate our birth date enter your birth year um 1995 say you are your age is 28 so it's a little bit more it's actually a program or actually computing something and to your birth date what about someone really old 1927 how old is someone born in 1927 96 years old 
So there we go, that's the scanf. So what we really want to do is understand what this address of operator is. So let's figure that out for the rest of this part. Get rid of all that. We're going to do int input equals 10. We're going to set it to something. And then we're going to do, um, let's print it out. Uh, we can't use percent %d for an address. We have to use percent %zu. Strangely enough, because percent %zu is for really big numbers. Um, we're going to print out the address of the input, just to see what it looks like. And we get this really big number starting at 1,4. And if we run it again, it'll be a different number, but it's not a drastically different number. This is not random undefined behavior. This is a number in a similar sort of range. Well, this is the actual memory, memory address of that input variable. So when, when I say this is the address of operator, that's literally what it is. It, 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 rather than printing out the value of input, we're printing out the address of the variable input. So why is this important? Why do we need why do we need to be able to do that? Well, the we, well, let's find out. Let's find out. So let's print out. Let's go back to percent D. Let's print out input. But what we're going to do is we're going to do input plus equals ten. So we're declaring a variable called input, a type int, and assigning it a value of ten, and then we're adding ten to uh, input and then we're going to print out the final value. What's the final value going to be? I'm pretty sure we can all guess. It's going to be 20, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be 20. In fact, we'll put a message here. We'll put input equals 20. Obviously, I haven't changed the program very much here. Input equals 20. Now, let's say we want to make a function that, um, that does that for us, that adds 10. To, uh, to the input. So we could put like void, we're going to go void function, which doesn't return any kind of value. I'm going to call it change. So we just do a straightforward return. I'm going to take input as a uh, parameter for this function. So rather than doing plus equals 10 there, we're going to do that in our function and we're just going to call that function. So we're going to put um, change input. So you'd think that would work, wouldn't it? So we've got a variable called input and we've assigned it a value of 10. Then we're running this change function on the input, which takes an int input, and then we add 10 to it and then the function returns. I'm gonna print out the value of input. So let's see what happens. Input is still 10. Why is input still 10? Everything seems to work. You know, the program didn't complain, it compiled. Uh, and we've added the value of 10 to the input, just like we did before in our main function, but it's not worked. The, the input has remained the same. There's a reason why this happens. In C programming, we can only pass by value, not by reference. So we, we're passing here to change the value of input, which is 10. And up here in this int input, we've got as our uh, parameter for our, for our function, we're creating a copy of this input, we're creating an, an entirely new int input. And we can prove this by, we can call this something else. We can call it hello, it doesn't have to be called the same thing. We're creating an entirely new variable. And just to prove this, we can print this out. And sure enough, the same thing happens. So we create an entirely new variable called hello now, we add, which has the value of the input, it's 10, it's a set of the value of 10, we're adding 10 to it, so it all works. So hello, the hello variable becomes 20, and this function returns, all that data is lost and the program carries on like normal, and this input variable is completely unaffected. So if we want to change this variable, and we can only pass by value, we need to pass something else to this, this change function. We can pass the address, where is the address? We can pass the address of this input variable, which is itself a value. And that, therefore, I mean, the, um, the address of this input variable isn't gonna change, is it? That's, that's a location in memory, so whatever function is dealing with that location on memory, it's, um, it's, it's gonna be a fixed location. Even if we're, we're using it in a different function, that location in memory is, is constant throughout our program while it's running. But in order to do that, we need to, let's put this back to input. No, in fact, we'll put input address. Input address. 
Now, we have to, if we're passing a address, we have to, we have to make sure, this isn't actually an int, this is an address, isn't it? So we use a star operator. We use a star operator to say that this is a pointer to a memory address. And then in here, we have to dereference that memory address in order to access the value at that memory address. Now, we're gonna cover pointers to, um, to the nth degree. And uh, they're a difficult concept to get your head around. And as I said, this is where C programming all starts to look a bit crazy to anyone who's coming from another programming language that doesn't involve pointers. Um, they're actually not as complicated as they seem. Um, it uh, is largely about learning how to sort of how to say say the right thing. So this being the address of operator, this being a dereference operator, this being an int pointer to a, an int, a pointer to an int rather than just an int. Um, understanding the differences in in C program, we have overloaded operators, so we can have like a single thing that means lots of things depending on the context we use it at. But the, the, the important thing is if we pass the address of this input variable and then we modify the value at that address, we are gonna achieve the right result in this program. So we can just think of this, this part as an introduction. And now input is now 20, so we've successfully changed the address. And this explains why scanf requires a address of operator, because we're not just sending a copy of the value of input into scanf in our previous example. We need to modify that actual variable. So we have to send the address of that variable to the scanf function, which waits for user input and then puts that user input into the value of that address. And then the program execution continues once once it receives the input. So this is, a this is like I say, this is a challenging concept. You won't find it in, in anything other than system level programming languages. You are, you do find uh, pointers in Java. You're going to find pointers in C++, obviously, which is um, C with classes. And um, you're going to uh, find it in, I would imagine, Rust and languages like that, where we can access memory addresses directly. The important thing to remember in this video is that when we um, create, a, when, when we make a function and pass a value to it, we end up with a copy of, the, of that value. We don't end up with the actual variable that we that we um, pass to it, we end up with a copy of it. And when that function returns, all that information is lost. So if we want to uh, modify a value in in a, in a calling function, we have to send the address of that input. And that's it, that covers scanf. So that was 50% scanf and 50% address of operator, but that that's just the way it is. <laughs> the address of operator is vitally important in C programming. Right, so that about does it. Um, I will see you next time. Goodbye.